And the bottom line is there are some laws about this. There's something called can spam. And basically, if someone is your customer and they voluntarily give you their email address with the understanding you're going to connect with them, you can do it. If you start sending it out to 5,000 people, you need to start thinking about the legal aspects and maybe talk to somebody who's more familiar with it. And um, if you're buying lists from people, make sure that the reputable vendors who have permission from people to send emails. Um, I know in California, uh, there's legislation, it's $100 per violation. If they're not supposed to guess, you send out 1,000 of these and $100, that's Okay, this is this is my favorite picture because this was taken at a concert. So they're a loud concert, and there's a woman on the phone. And there's a guy texting, and that makes the point. Three mobile eras, and this goes back to kind of explaining how the world has changed. The first was just communication. Now, if we had the phone, we could call people, we could text people. The second was you know content. You could go online and you could get email, you can watch videos, you can do all stuff. Now it's context. And this one, content context, is content is, I want to learn about restaurants. Context is, I want to learn about restaurants within half a mile of where I am, so I'm hungry now. And that's where we are right now. We're in the context issue of mobile. And that's why mobile is so powerful, because it's immediate, it's personal, and because you have it with you all the time. Um, half the population has smartphones, and my guess is by the end of the next year, it'll be 75 years. And what's really interesting is, we used to have like phones and computers and that line's getting really blurred and as you can see in 2013 there are going to be more people going online with their phones than with their computers. And that's really important because you have to make sure like if you're sending out a, a, an email class that are information people, make sure it works on a mobile device first. Yes? Because they're most likely to look at your email first or your information on a mobile device. The problem is, is when you format things for a computer screen and then you look at it on a smartphone, it doesn't always look as attractive. When you format things for a mobile phone and you look at them on a computer screen, they're even more beautiful because you just blew up the picture. So make sure it works mobile first. And for those of you who just came in, stop us at any time if you have questions. We're starting at 930 on the board. You know what? I should have because so I, I, I thought it was nice. So so we're giving you more, though. Is okay. there a specific one you need to do it on your smartphone to open up in a way, or are you just... There, there are what you call I, mobile enhanced websites, doing it, and right? you can set up a website that recognizes that a smartphone is looking for it. Mm -hmm. And basically, as Patrick says, you know, the screen's this small, so you mm -hmm. don't want to have a ton of little stuff. Yeah. Um, if you know that the bulk of people are using smartphones, or phones, or tablets now, which are bigger, yeah. to visit you, you want to make sure you don't have lots of TV time. You want to make sure that it works. But you can create a special website in addition to your regular website, which is mobile enhanced. Mobile enhanced? Yeah. I don't know if I have any pictures of that. I think I do have a picture in here. Um, mobile is great for real-time updates. Here's um, ABS. I think it was last year. Ted Gibson was... You know, Greg, Greg was at our booth, so we were we had we had people's mobile phone numbers, and they said we want to find out what's going on the show. So we were text, we were, we were sending texts out. One of them was the Dallas Zoo came to our booth, you know, it was a couple of years ago. So all of a sudden, we had five thousand people. But five years ago, we couldn't have done that. Um, mobile is great for media feedback. It's great to put out offers. Does anyone know what this is? You are code. You are code. Okay. Um, how do you think they're using it? Well, basically, what a QR code is, you go to your phone, and you click a, you, you have a program, and you get the QR code, and it takes you to a web page. Now, in this case, the web page might be, you just won a free blow drive, or you just won some free conditioner. So, there's a sense of immediacy here. You're walking by this, and you're saying, hey, let me check this out, and it might encourage you to go in at that very moment. I think QR codes are genius for what we do. Um, one thing that we did at our salon was we made little three-minute videos, said to the team, pick your favorite product. So the team would pick their favorite product, we would do a little three-minute video about how to use that product when you got home. Then you can go to websites for free. I go to one that's called iNigma. You can then make your own free QR code. You 
you go to Staples or Office Max, Office Depot, you get the Avery labels for QR codes. Mm -hmm. You print them off, and now you put them on the back of the bottle. So now your guest goes home from the salon and they want to know how to use the new Amplify Wonder Boost. They hit the QR code and they get you. They don't get a 13-year-old girl. And the other thing that's really cool about that, and I learned this years ago from my buddy Rod, guests come to us for one of two reasons. Either people are the best or the best for the price. But they always want to prove to their friend that they should be coming to you. Yes? So now they can also take that bottle into, their, into the office and go, you know that person I've been telling you should be doing their hair? Look at this, because now you're the celebrity. Yeah? And the great thing about QR codes is they can be put anywhere. You can put them outside your salon that people can go by and can get, whether it's your bridal services. They can get uh, information about your team. I don't use them as business cards. I do not have a business card anymore. You know, how often do you get a business card from somebody, put it in your pocket, and then go home and wash it? Yeah. Or lose it? When you get the QR code, you read it, it's in the records forever, and you have the right information for infinity. And they're wonderful, wonderful yeah, things. Who said that it was Yes, I dash. There's a whole bunch of free if places. If you go to like an app store, yep. you, you type in um, QR codes, a bunch of them will come. I have like three or four different ones. Yep. Where you've seen a lot of this is you see realtor signs. Yep. So you're driving by a house. Yeah. It has one of these codes on the sign. You can click on it, go to a website, which will say this house is 2,000 square feet, two bedrooms, two baths, all kinds of stuff like that. So it's, it's incredible because there's a sense of immediacy. And with half the people having smartphones, yeah. They, you can have something, learn about our new styles or something. A lot of times people don't want to talk to you. They want to get information yeah. first. So it's a way to... Another good one, you think about even a used car today. You can take a virtual tour of a used car, yes? Yes. Can somebody take a virtual tour of your salon? So you can have a QR code outside your salon that when they come in, they know where the bathroom is. They know what the team looks like. They feel comfortable with your space because they've had that opportunity to try you out virtually by reading that QR code and, and, and taking that tour on their time to learn more about you.